Hi, welcome to My Court Coach. I'm Jay Lynn and I'm going to be your instructor as we navigate through form DV805, Proof of Enrollment for Batterer Intervention Program. So the Batterer Intervention Program purpose is to stop domestic violence. So if you have been found to commit domestic violence and the other party has requested or the court has ordered on its own motion that you should complete a batterer intervention program, then you will need to provide proof to the court that you did enroll in the program. This is typically after a domestic violence restraining order hearing. So this wouldn't be done in the context of a temporary restraining order because the court does need to hear from you and does need to confirm that you um, did commit acts of domestic violence after they've heard from you. So we wanted to just go over some of the requirements of this domestic violence uh, program. And this is going to be found in Penal Code Section 1203.097. And it states that the goal of a batterer's program shall be to stop domestic violence. A batterer's program shall consist of the following components. Strategies to hold the defendant accountable for the violence in a relationship including but not limited to providing the defendant with a written statement that the defendant shall be accountable, shall be held accountable for acts or threats of domestic violence. A requirement that the defendant participate in ongoing same gender group sessions. An initial intake that provides written definitions to the defendant of physical, emotional, sexual, economic, and verbal abuse, and the techniques for stopping these types of abuse. Procedures to inform the victim regarding the requirements for the defendant's participation in the intervention as well as regarding available victim resources. The victim shall also be informed that the attendance in any program does not guarantee that the abuser will not be violent. A requirement that the defendant attend group sessions free of chemical influence. Educational programming that examines, at a minimum, gender roles, socialization, the nature of violence, the dynamics of power and control, and the effects of abuse on children and others. A requirement that excludes any couple counseling or family counseling or both. Procedures that give the program the right to assess whether or not the defendant, which is the abuser, would benefit from the program and to refuse to enroll the defendant if it is determined that the defendant would not benefit from the program, so long as the refusal is not because of the defendant's inability to pay. If possible, the program shall suggest an appropriate alternative program. Program staff who, to the extent possible, have specific knowledge regarding but not limited to spousal abuse, child abuse, sexual abuse, substance abuse, the dynamics of violence and abuse, and procedures of the legal system. Program staff who are encouraged to utilize the expertise, training, and assistance of local domestic violence centers. A requirement that the defendant enter into a written agreement with the program, which shall include an outline of the contents of the program, the attendance requirements, the requirements to attend group sessions free of chemical influence, and a statement that the defendant may be removed from the program if it is determined that the program or that the defendant is not benefiting from the program or is disruptive to the program. A requirement that the defendant sign a confidentiality statement prohibiting disclosure of any information obtained through participating in the program during group sessions regarding other participants in the program. 
program content that provides cultural and ethnic sensitivity, a requirement of a written referral from the court or probation department prior to permitting the defendant to enroll in the program, the written referral shall, shall state the number of minimum sessions required by the court, in DV cases it's 52 weeks, procedures for submitting to the probation department all of the following uniform written responses. Proof of enrollment to be submitted to the court and the probation department and to include the fee determined to be charged to the defendant based upon the ability to pay for each session. Periodic progress reports that includes attendance, fee payment history, and program compliance. And then a, flight, a final evaluation that includes the program evaluation of the defendant's progress. Using the criteria set forth, in subparagraph A of paragraph 10 of subdivision A, and the recommendations for either successful or unsuccessful termination or continuation of the program. So this is a great way for you to learn a little bit about what a better intervention program is, the purpose of it, and that it is very serious. If the court orders you to attend a batter intervention program, then it's because the acts of violence, the acts of abuse are so serious that the court believes that without a 52 week batter intervention program, you would continuously abuse the other party and others. So if you were to enroll in the batterer intervention program, then you need to provide proof. You're going to name the protected person, the other party, the restrained person, so your name, your lawyer if you have one, your address, or if it's confidential, your mailing address, and your telephone and email or fax number if you wish to provide that information. Now it's going to give you a notice. This form is giving you a notice and informing you. If the court has ordered you to complete a 52-week batterer intervention program, you must complete and file this form to prove to the court that you have obeyed its orders. After the order is made, you must enroll in a program by the date ordered by the judge. If the judge did not order you to enroll by a certain date, then you must enroll no later than 30 days after the judge made the order. So you have to write in your name and you're declaring the following, that you have enrolled in a batter intervention program that is approved by the probation department under penal code section 123.097 and that is the code section that we read parts of, the relevant parts of, then you have to list the name of the provider, the address and telephone number. So how do we find a provider? Your local county, if you go onto their website and you type in the search toolbar, batter intervention program, it will take you to a section within the county's website where it'll give you a list of resources that you can contact and those typically are approved by the court. And so you could, again, just go through and contact those in individuals or those programs and see whether they have availability and what next steps you can take to qualify for their program. And so once you uh, find somebody that you are comfortable completing the batter intervention program with, and it's not going to necessarily be somebody, it's going to be an actual program. Um, once you find that institution, then you could list their name, their address, and telephone number. So once your contract is signed with them and that you've made the payments, then you are in fact enrolled. So it says that you have signed all necessary forms with the program, allowing the program to release proof of enrollment, attendance records, and completion or termination reports to the court and the protected party or his or her attorney. 
So this is important because maybe you start the better intervention program and halfway through they are giving you negative notations and you are now found to be somebody who is not going to benefit from the program. And then the program is going to notify the court of that. You're, I mean, you could be possibly looking to go into jail for violating the court's order because you are not, even though you're enrolled in the program, you're not completing it. And all violations carry the possibility of you going to jail. So it's very important to complete the 52-week better intervention program. Um, there has been cases where when like maybe the court is not necessarily um, ordering the 52-week better intervention program, but the other party, the protected party, is requiring it in order for them to dismiss the restraining order or to shorten the length of the restraining order because they really do want you to get that help. So it's very important that you take that seriously if you have been ordered to do the better intervention program. So you would have to list when is your first class or which first class you've actually attended. And then any other orders that were made by the judge that would show the court that you have completed that order. So you need to make sure that you are in compliance with the better intervention program requirements in order for you to not be in violation of the restraining order after hearing. So the restraining order that protects the other party on a more permanent basis. So you must provide the protected party with the information listed and then have somebody else, remember if somebody over the age of 18, that's obviously not you and not a protected party, to mail a copy of this form to the protected party. And you can use the proof of service by mail, the DV-250. You can watch a video as to how to complete that. And you do need to also file it with the clerk. And then, of course, keep a copy for yourself. And you are going to sign this under penalty of perjury. So everything in this form is true and correct. And remember that the agency, the program, can notify the court at any time when you are misbehaving or they're kicking you out of the program or anything that requires them to notify the court about, about you. So there's no way really of getting out of this. And so you're better off just completing the 52 week better intervention program or however long it might be and um, providing that proof to the court to show that you are in compliance and who knows, maybe you'll get something out of it. Don't forget to date and print and sign your name and we hope that you found this helpful and best of luck.